Well, hello everyone. Paul here at Rojobi Music. And uh, today we've got yet another unboxing. So, just picked this up today from the post office. Here it is. And I think it's quite fair to say that it's arrived in slightly better condition than the previous two uh, packages. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> That's a bit more like it. Um, I mean, to be fair, it's, it's, it's packaged uh, differently to, to the others. It's, uh, it's a purpose-made polystyrene box and there is an obvious seam around it where it's quite obviously um, a lid. So, uh, what have we got here? That's just the delivery note. Not too much of any interest on there. Um, there's two copies for some reason. Anyway, that's the delivery note. Okay, so, what have we got this time? Let's have a look, shall we? I think most of you will know kind of what it is by the size and shape of the box. Um, but as you can see, I mean, it's, it's a substantial size. And <laughs> I'm just, uh, yeah, I can hear something rattling in there, but it's, it's not, no damage, I know what it is. Um, kind of funny little thing. Okay, let's open her up and see what we've got. Let's just lower you down a bit. Okay, so as I said, there is a seam around which is quite clearly a lid to this box. So I'll carefully cut around that. Okay. Right, where are we? Okay. Two sides. One and a half. Okay. Yeah, substantially better packed than the previous two, and as I've said, considerably better condition on its arrival, which is a bit of a relief. I wasn't sure what to expect again this time, um, but yeah, pleasantly surprised this time. But that's not the way it should be, is it? I mean, you, you should expect all of your packages to arrive in good condition, not the two train wrecks that I've had previously. Uh, okay, so there's the lid, and that is a solid piece of uh, polystyrene there. So much, much better. And this is what we get inside. And as you can see, it's you know it's it's a, a solid polystyrene block with a cutaway. But this inside, I mean, that is just the most ideal packaging. Not environmentally, obviously, but, you know, that's just the protection wise. It doesn't really get a lot better than that. Okay, so we've got a little uh, bag of accessories here as well. Um, so you can see, you know, it, it's been done properly. And, you know, as I said, apart from the environmental issues of this kind of packaging material, um, as far as protection is concerned, it don't get a lot better than that. Um, I'm going to keep that box as well because if I ever, um, you know, send the ukulele off somewhere that someone buys, then, you know, that's going to be ideal. Okay, so, um, yeah, we'll, we'll come to, there's quite a lot of accessories in there actually, pretty impressed with that. Okay, so. What have we got in here? So it's, it's quite a good bag, actually. Um, you know, this <laughs> is what it is, isn't it? I mean, you, you know, you can put stuff in there. Um, not exactly sure what, to be honest. Water bottle or something, I don't know. Um, got a nice little pocket at the front, which actually opens that away, which I've not seen before. They normally open at the top. That's it. Decent size for getting your sheet music in, spare strings, a few other bits and pieces. Um, the case itself seems alright actually. It's not really fit padded, but 
has got uh, the double straps on so you can carry it like a backpack which is always much more handy um, with these gig bags so overall it looks quite decent the, uh, the gig bag so what's inside <laughs> okay so my standard polystyrene type bag that they come in Okay, let's put the gig bag aside. Um, let's just have a look at the padding. Actually, the padding is quite quite good on that. Not too bad at all. That's that's a that's a decent gig bag. You know, for the for the uh, price range. <coughs> okay. Trust will adjust that. That's a good start. Good sign. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Dun dun dun. Okay, straight off the. Back. It's a Bat King. Okay, if anybody, any of you know that brand, oh, it's got a very nice truss rod cover at the top there as well. Is that real wood? I do believe it is. Not plastic. Yeah. Tuners. Yeah. Sealed, sealed tuners with black plastic buttons. Not the best, but they're, they're pretty good. They, they, uh, they hold up very well. Uh, okay, so. Let's have a look at the rest of it. Dun, dun, dun. Da, 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 da. Okay. That's uh, rather nice wood. A bit of a scratch on the back. Oh dear, that's not a good start. Uh, okay, so this is a back king. Uh, baritone semi-acoustic ukulele. Got quite a cutesy sound hole arrangement going on there. Not quite sure what that's supposed to be. I don't know. A fish? A gecko? I don't know. Quite nice though. Quite nice looking. Um, lovely zebra wood uh, or possibly mahogany laminate. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think it's a mahogany neck, so it might be mahogany laminate, top, back and sides. Um, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, it's got quite a nice uh, binding around, which goes the top edge and the side edge. Uh, is it real binding or is it painted on? Sure, it might be real. You can feel where you've got sort of each individual piece here. I can I can like feel the gaps between them. I'm gonna have a closer look at that. Anyway, so uh, yeah, so it's baritone, so it's tuned D G B E, and uh, I already have a baritone, uh, which is that one there. Uh, that one is uh, Kamai's. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty good, I, I quite like it, um, but I wanted this one and my original plan, uh, if this one's good enough, one, you know, once I've um, set it up and played it and tried it out, uh, my original plan was to restring that one back to right-handed, because that's how it originally came, and put it for sale in the shop, but um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm going to or not. I haven't decided yet. Uh, okay, so let's have a, a quick look over this instrument. Um, it's got a light coloured uh, bridge on there. Uh, again, I'm not quite sure what wood that is. Um, it's quite nice though. Uh, I have just noticed that the, the fret edges are a little bit, a bit rough. I'm going to need to do a little bit of a fret job on there. And how about the level? Uh, the frets actually look quite level. Not too bad at all. Um, so I probably won't need to do a fret leveling, which is really good. I've just got to um, just take some of the rough edges off the frets here. It's not too bad. <coughs> Certainly have worse. Um, yeah, it just needs a little bit of a file going up each side. Um, there is a little bit of a ding just there focus focus 
I'm not sure how you can see it. There's a little bit of a ding in the side of the fretboard there. Let's see, is there, is there any more? Uh, there's a few... Oh, I'm going to see that. Um, a few light scuffs on this side. Um, as for the body itself, a um, little bit of a blemish there. I'm not quite sure how well you'll see that. I don't think you can. It's just a it looks like a watermark or something. Um, let's see. It does come with uh, two strap buttons attached. That's good. Uh, there's your battery compartment. Um, yeah, so there's a few marks on the back as well. <sighs> One, yeah, there's a mark here. There's another one here. There's another one here. Looks like there might be another one there, maybe. Light scuffs. Um, I might actually be able to uh, buff those out. I'm not too sure. I, I'm not. I'm not going to be too worried about this. It well, it wasn't a high price really. Um, there is. It does seem to be a little bit of a scratch. You can't see it. Yeah, maybe you can. A little bit of a scratch going down there. As, as I said, I might be able to buff all those little bits and pieces out. It's nothing major. Um, I'm, I'm not too too bothered about that. If it was a high end instrument or expensive, then you know I'd, I'd be a bit a bit annoyed and get that followed up. Um, the nut uh, is quite well fitting. Not not perfect, but it's not too bad. Um, the actual way the, the nut is cut, there's quite a good break angle at this side. Um, that, that's quite good. Uh, as I said, yeah, it's got the wooden truss rod cover. That's quite a nice look feature. Um, it's got a fairly decent uh, preamp setup in it. Um, it's got volume. Oh, yeah, volume, bass, middle, and treble. It's rather good. And obviously the built-in tuner as well. And uh, from the reviews I've seen, they, those are quite good. They seem to work quite well and they're fairly accurate. No battery. Um, I'm guessing that's going to be a 1632 or 2032 and it looks like probably two of them. I've got some of those, that's not a problem. Um, but a general uh, overview of this instrument looks quite good. Uh, I think I might need to do a little bit of work on the action, that seems a bit high. Um, I can probably take the saddle down a little bit. Um, it's a bit easier to do this one. It's got the bridge pins, which is also a nice little touch. Uh, it's probably not in any kind of tune. How about volume? Not amazing. <laughs> not too bad. Um, yeah, so overall quite pleased with this. Um, I am obviously going to do uh, a setup on it. It needs a little bit of filing on the edges of the frets. Um, I'll check the height of the strings. It does look to me as though they're a little bit high. Uh, and um, if necessary, I can take, take the saddle out, take a little bit off the bottom to lo lower that, to lower the action. Uh, the nut, actually, that looks pretty high at the nut too. Yeah, that, that action's, oh my God. <laughs> That action's really high at the nut, so I'll take the action down at the nut first um, and then uh, check the action at the 12th fret and if necessary I can still take it down at the, the saddle as well. Um, I mean there's no, point, there's no point doing the action at this end until I've sorted it out at this end because that's, that's uh, definitely too high there at, at the and the nut action's a bit high. So I'll take that down. And um, I mean, the neck is pretty straight. And as I said, the, 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 the frets themselves are quite level. 
doesn't seem to be any issues there at all. So overall, looks pretty good. Um, so as I said, it's going to need um, a, a light setup, um, the edges of the frets, the nuts, and probably the saddle as well to be lowered. Um, but other than that, I don't think it's going to need very much. Um, I am just looking at the the bridge, and I don't know if you can see, but at this this front corner, there is a little bit of a gap under there, um, and kind of along that way as well. There is a little bit of a gap under that bridge, which is little bit of a concern. Also the back edge, see on this this corner lifting a bit and in the middle, oh dear. <laughs> uh, hmm. Yeah, that might need a bridge reset. But then again it might not. What I'll do is I'll, I'll get it all set up and I'll get the strings up to tension and uh, see how that bridge holds up. Um, but there's a possibility that bridge might need to come off and be re-glued. Um, which normally would be, a, you know, would be sort of, well, it would be too much for most, for most people. Uh, but I, I've done quite a lot of bridge resets and uh, they're... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. They are for me. They're fairly simple to do. Uh, the The only problem is making sure that you don't damage the the, the finish um, on the on the instrument. Um, but it may or may not need to be done. So I'll check that later. Right. Let's have a look, little look at the uh, gig bag candy that comes with it. <laughs> Quite a few bits in here actually, more than I was expecting. So let's see what we've got. Cleaning cloth. That's that's quite nice. That feels like sort of faux chamois leather. That's quite a nice one with a little back emblem on it. That's rather nice. Uh, little booklet. Ukulele primary tutorial. Okay. Um, oh yeah, that's pretty good. It's got. Um, uh, let's see tuning. And um, not that I need it, but you know, instructions on strumming, and there's there's a few songs and notations and everything in there. That's that's not a bad little uh, extra. I'll have a proper look through that and see if I can learn anything more from that. Uh, okay, spare set of strings, ukulele, pure Cooper acoustic ukulele strings. Oh. Your what? C P O O E R. <laughs> What's that? I don't know. Pure Kapua. <laughs> Never heard of it. Uh, is, is it supposed to be copper or? Co wouldn't be copper. Cooper? I don't know. Pure Kapua. Okay. Uh, okay, anyway, spare set of strings. Uh, <laughs> straight out of the box like that. Okay. So they're nothing special, but you know, spare strings are always nice. Um, let's see, what else have we got? Well, a nice looking little strap. I quite like the look of that. It's uh, probably inch and a half wide. Um, looks like it's got leather or faux leather ends. Rather nice. What else? Oh dear. <laughs> right, so we've got a little plastic bridge pin puller, a spare set of bridge pins in white and the ones on there are black. Uh, it's got a few picks and a pick holder. Okay. And... <laughs> There's a shaker. So when you're playing, you've got this shaker coming on as well. Uh, there's tiny little ball bearings in there, little steel ball bearings. That's uh, interesting. And lastly, we've got a box. Ah, capo. Hello. Comes with a capo. That's kind of funky. <laughs> Not bad. I mean, a you know cheapo one. But so, how many accessories? One, two, three, four, five, 
six plus this little bag of goodies, so seven if you like. That's all right. And it comes with a half decent gig bag as well. Not bad at all. Um, okay, so I'm going to uh, end this video here now, um, and I'm going to uh, take a closer look at this ukulele and um, you know see if I can find um, what what wood it is, for example, and uh, you know if I can, I'll have a look at those um, scratches and marks and see if I can get rid of those and see what I need to do for setup. Probably what I will do is I'll just tune it up to pitch for now um, and I'll check uh, intonation and um, the string height, the action, and just see what I need to do. So I'm gonna have a look over it and, and check all those things and I'm going to probably make another video um, about you know do, doing the, the setup and everything and what I found <coughs> Excuse me. And so that will be a, f well, hopefully a fairly short video. And once I've done that, once I'm happy with the setup and everything is, is how I like it, um, I'm going to do a comparison between, between um, this one and my original uh, baritone there. So, so that, that one is Kamai's, and this one is Batking. Um, they're more or less the same price range. I can't remember off the top of my head, um, but they're you know they're they're both sort of entry level beginner type instruments, um, but fairly decent ones for their price range and, and for their level. So yeah, so I'm gonna have a look over this instrument, do you know see what I need to do for a setup, make another video on that, and as I said, I will also do a comparison video between this one and my. Uh, Kamais. So, hope you enjoyed this. Thank you all very much for watching. No, uh, no unpleasant surprises this time. Actually, quite pleasant. Well, you know, the packaging was much better. What I found inside is, you know, as good as the previous instrument, although albeit a few little marks on it. But I, as I said, I think I'll be able to get rid of those. I don't. I don't think they're, you know. Apart from that little ding in the side of the fretboard, but that's that's not really an issue. Um, I just noticed also it does have the um, side fret markers uh, on the correct side as well for the, for a left hander. Um, okay, so again, as I said, thank you very much for watching. Um, please, if you haven't already, like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And we will see you all again soon. Peace out.